Hello and welcome to another episode of Haunts R Us, where we are haunted on Main. My name's Cheeb, and I never did the elf on the shelf thing. Unfortunately, I'm too Mexican for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined today. Unfortunately, <laughs> we don't we don't believe in magic or wonder. <laughs> Just dying and suffering, really. <laughs> Life's right. a bitch and then you die, man. That's it. <laughs> That's no it. <laughs> I'm joined today by my two co-hosts, Thadi and Gato. Tell me about yourselves, ladies. Uh, I'm Thadi, and I also have never done that elf on the shelf. Uh, it also terrifies me. I'm really glad that uh, I'm, I've never been more proud to be Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> it was just easier to say. You were just like, like I've never been actually I'm from like I don't know where you said you're from. Guatemala. Well I know from... it. Actually. <laughs> actually, so such as from Guatemalan. <laughs> Guatemalan that, like, that sounds like a new Pokemon. Guatemalan <laughs> <laughs> He's just a red and green. G- uh, gizzard? What? I don't know. <laughs> the, the representation what, what we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope he's a grass type. So he. So I. Oh. 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 <laughs> Before the episode started, we were talking about, or I was talking about Milo and how much I love him. And I was like, stop. I, want, I love him. <laughs> no more thirst thirst That's posting on my Discord. Gato, <laughs> tell us who you are. <laughs> Gato. What to do, y'all? <laughs> it's Gato. And I, too, am Mexican. Because I've never done Elf on the Shelf, nor do I have an interest in putting a creepy, smiley uh, thingy on my shelf. And I don't know what is the purpose of it. He does, like, hide and seek or... He spooks on you. I don't know what it is. That's a crazy <laughs> tradition. I whoop an elf if it's sp- sp- like uh, I can't talk. If it spooked on me, it's on sight. That's all you have to know. I don't mess with that shit. No, dude. It's just like that. That elf is just a snitch. <laughs> we don't mess with no snitches. Yeah. Of course we don't. We don't like don't tell nothing. Those. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah like we said tonight we're going to talk about elf on the shelf and we're going to do something like real special something real different for tonight's episode because we're going to read to you a creepy pasta or as i like to call it a sleepy pasta this is the episode that you our beautiful audience particularly our good friend sevi is going to put on to take a nap to because <laughs> we're going to read to you in a little bit <laughs> Hey, shout but out to first, hey. <laughs> shout out, we love you. Hey. 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 So yeah, let's talk a little bit about the Elf on the Shelf. I don't know if you guys know, but Elf on the Shelf isn't like something by a major toy company. It's not by like Hasbro or Mattel or any of them. Uh, Elf on the Shelf is like a very home-brewed business, which I think is like really neat. It's a... Uh, Carol Abersold and her daughter started the Elf on the Shelf business, so to speak. Uh, they started selling the Elf on the Shelves at like local trade shows and markets, and like they sold it online into like local bookstores. So it was like a very small, contained thing. And it wasn't until like 2007, uh, where in November, when act where actress Jennifer Garner. Jennifer Garner was photographed carrying the Elf on the Shelf box in New York. And that's when it started to fucking blow up everywhere. The Today Show ran a segment on the Elf on the Shelf. And from there, they were flooded with calls and orders. And more bookstores and toy stores started selling their product. That's 12 cool. years. Yeah, isn't that fucking cool? That's pretty cool. Yeah, that comes to show that, like... The only way to get off the ground is if someone else promotes you, man. <laughs> exactly, man. It's to be endorsed by a celebrity. Uh, we gotta, we, dude. We gotta get someone to endorse us, bro. <laughs> we gotta get on, <laughs> on Doctor Phil. 
<laughs> I can't hot dog with it. So we can be <laughs> like um, act crazy. Yeah, like a bad baby, the girl from a Catch Me Outside. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, she's got like a whole fucking weird influencer thing going on, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, man. She's, I, I think she's got like a makeup line or something. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't know about that stuff. I'm too old to keep track of this shit, man. She's a rapper too. You could do anything. <laughs> you could do anything <laughs> once you fucking sell out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God, when are, hey. when are we gonna sell out? Adam and Eve, reach out to us, bro. <laughs> Bro, I, that's my lifelong dream. I want to be sponsored by Adam and Eve. Let's get free dildos. No. Yes. Adam and Eve, hey. Hey, 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 hey hit us up. I'll review we're, all, we're all about toys, man. Yeah, we... Are we all about toys? Well... All toys. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know what an elf on the shelf looks like uh the design is heavily based on the yuletide of japan company kneeling el- hugger elves that were like really popular in like the 60s and 70s it's like really iconic like american kish stuff that you'd like find in like old households uh personally for me elf on the shelf looks like a little red slender man with nub hands <laughs> and feet and he kind of kind of looks like a little Campbell's kid or like a, a cupie because he's looking off to the side. He's that's true. Yeah, he does. That's spot on. Yeah, that's pretty spot. It looks Euclid. like a little Campbell's kid or a cupie doll with like spindly yeah. little <laughs> little, but like less and... cute and like way more menacing. And yeah, a fucking cause... snitch. <laughs> the fucking no fucking rat. <laughs> <laughs> and like and like we mentioned earlier in our intro is that Elf on the Shelf has been subject to a lot of criticisms over the years. Uh there's like a lot of think pieces and a lot of people on like social media talking about how like it's a big uh the what is it? Um I guess the part that people most don't like the most is like the normalization of like surveillance being like a snitch and all and just like the plain yeah. creepiness of the doll itself, you know? Like, people are generally uneasy around this little troll man. (laughs) As they should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another complaint that that parents seem to have over these Elf on the Shelves thing is that, like, they don't want to, like, put in, like, the effort into the tradition to, like, putting the elf on, like, a different position and like a different part of the house because like people on social media do it big so they're just like man i can't compete with these fucking influencers yeah. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that shit man no man i don't get paid to post pictures on the internet <laughs> i don't know if anyone can't be put does, in this elf like... sorry does anyone get paid to post does anyone get people paid to on post Instagram. pictures? Do they? I have no idea how people get paid on yeah. Instagram, dude. I don't well, know no, any get... of this shit. It's all advertisements, man. So whenever like they show you teas or whatever, they're like, oh my god, I lost so much weight and this is my favorite tea. Or like, I don't know, they're using new makeup brushes or some shit. It's, it's all just advertising. They get paid for... They get paid to advertise the stuff and they also get paid like with affiliate links and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's just one big commercial that <laughs> Instagram is. Um, all I follow on Instagram are like artists and like weird niche blogs. Anything that has to do with like restora- re- restoring or like repainting toys, like I'm all over that shit on Instagram. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to have to go on Instagram with that whole thing that's happening with YouTube. Mm, yeah, it's, uh, that's unfortunate. But it seems like it's uh, something that's yeah. kind of like a long time coming because there's a lot of questionable content for children on YouTube and I think that's been like the only thing that they've been able to like have a solid like legal grasp on so far is like the the like possibility that these that YouTube is like keeping inf- like information on like these children and stuff which is creepy yeah yeah I but that. yeah Definitely. like I feel the the platform is definitely going to go through some changes, but like you can't change that kids go on YouTube, you know, so it's really complicated, you know? Yeah. 
But also, I think there's a lot of content and stuff that should kind of be not seen by kids on YouTube, you know? You feel? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> YouTube I is feel a like kids sketchy. Just, shouldn't be, just don't be on the internet. Just don't. <sighs> Man, you can't stop that now. It's fucking 2019 as of the time of I this recording. I can stop whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> Everything needs like... apps. It's not like back in the day where we had internet access in the computer labs. Like, kids even had to get apps to do homework. Like, technology is crazy. Like, dude. Um, yeah, true, well, no, that's not true. Never mind. You're right. It's my true. parents used to have, like, child... What is it? Like, child locks on my computer. <laughs> So, How? like, they block websites and stuff. I don't remember what it was, but they were able to, like, block certain websites or, like, if any website had, like, anything rated R, they're mm-hmm. like, no, nah, you can't go on that. And I still found a way around it. As you <laughs> always find a way around it, you know? There's no hope Yeah, in they're it. like, oh, you can only go, uh, or you can only use a computer for two hours. And I'm like, okay, I'll load, like, 50 YouTube videos and I'll just go through them after they've loaded. Oh, dude, was that when, like, dial-up internet was a thing? <laughs> kind of. No, it was, like, what was it? Like, the timer would stop because everything was loaded already. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then nice. I would, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of all of it. And then I used to, like, copy-paste fan fiction into, like, Word documents. <gasps> what? <laughs> oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> So I can read it. They were just all on my computer. So I was like, okay, well, I can't be on the computer for more than an hour. Let me save all of this fan fiction and read it later. I mean, yeah, I kind I kind of yeah. did learn how to like torrent and like do zip yeah. files because I wanted to read Yaoi. Yeah. Oh, oh man, <laughs> that was a dark part of my life. Now that I think about it, it's okay. Do you want to stand for the nibbles? Anything. <laughs> Anything for Anything that BL. For the bar. Yeah, man. <laughs> Anything to catch a glimpse. I just want to see one titty. Yeah, man. Just, just one titty. <clears throat> Speaking Singular. of, like, children on the internet, I think there's, like, this oh. kind of odd genre of, like, YouTube video where it's just, like... I don't know how to describe it. I guess, like, the first video that came up when I when I YouTube search Elf on a Shelf was just, like, this little girl who was just like, today we're gonna figure out how to make Elf on the Shelf come out earlier this year. And then she just, like, makes some cookies and, like, colors a coloring page of, like, Elf on the Shelf and just has spent some quality time with her parent, but only because they're being monetized. So. Well... See, it's the only reason well, to spend time with your kids. If you're not getting paid to spend time with your kids, what's the fucking point? <laughs> mm-hmm. I heard that. Mm. Social media is terrible. You guys. Yeah, dude. Oh, I've noticed that because it's like a thing that kids are like really into. It's like family channels and like watching like other families do like their day to day. Oh, that's really sad. Mm. It's like a bunch it's of like... latchkey kids that don't see their mom. Oh, yeah, just like oh. a weird form of like voyeurism. Like I can't. I'm not into that sort of stuff. <clears throat> it's so sad. But speaking of children's content, you know who else made Elf on the Shelf content? Our boy, J Station. Oh. J Station. Another one. <laughs> J Station. Another one too. Oh no! <laughs> this is the, the J sequel. Station episode. <laughs> Oh no! What was it? Was it? Did they have a call at three a.m.? Did they I, I open up his body to find? <laughs> they did. Red they food opened coloring? up his body <laughs> per request oh of the obvi- audience. They opened up another elf on the shelf. Jesus! And what I what I really like about this video is like they really up the theatrics. So like elf on the shelf. I feel bad just calling him elf on the shelf. <laughs> But the elf. elf on the Shelf gets, like, a speaking role, and he attacks Jay Station. <laughs> they they really up the special effects in this one, you know? They really go all out <laughs> for it. I think at this point, the kids have caught on that it's not real. 
So it's just like, I'm just going to do whatever. That's so weird. Yeah, man. (laughs) J-Station. Or I uh, have beef with those channels that are like very definitely for kids, but they're not for kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like a large percentage of their audience is kids. Yeah, and not even the ones that are like, oh, it just so happens. Like, the ones that very definitely pander towards children. Because they always do, like, some stupid ass, like that, like, violent shit. And they're like, ooh, but, like, it's not that violent. It's still PG. You can still watch it. And, like, I don't know if you've seen, like, Jake Paul children, but they're, like, they're they're fucking crackheads, you guys. (laughs) They act crazy. I didn't know who Jake Paul was until, like, the thing with, like, the fucking, the, the trip to Japan. Yeah. Uh, neither did I. Yeah. Oh, and no, then, I believe it, yeah, though. It all I makes think, sense. like, uh, when you're a kid, you don't realize how, like, heavily you're influenced by these people until you're an adult and you're just like, wow. Yeah. And mm. you're like, oh, my God, that was fucking cringy. I was like, why was I screaming XX Tension in at an Ulta? <laughs> there was a Yodeling at the Walmart. That's literally <laughs> Yodeling at the Walmart. I'm trying to get famous at the Walmart. Yeah, I had a bunch of I still have a bunch of kids coming into the places that I work at and causing a ruckus because of some shit they saw on TV. Is or not TV, so? excuse me. On, on YouTube. YouTube? Yeah, like, I got out the stunts? Dude, what do you see? Dude, it's so stupid. Well, no, it's stupid stuff. I got, like, prank calls, and, like, it's definitely stuff that I've seen on the internet. Mm-hmm. There's... Ooh! Honestly, I, I mean, I thought it was funny. <laughs> but uh, there's... What is it? There's a YouTube video where people are ordering stuff through, like, a McDonald's drive through mm-hmm. But they're all talking at once. <laughs> So Mm -hmm. there's like, there's like four people in the car. They're all talking at once. And then once the person in the window, like, gets mad at them and is like, bro, one person at a time. They're like, oh, can I just get a water? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that happened to me the other day. (laughs) I think it's like, fuck. (laughs) You got pranked, bro. (laughs) Oh, I did. I did. I was like, man. I was like, y'all are lucky that that (laughs) hit. Got him. You're lucky that it's nighttime. Yeah. And then some kid like called us and was like, is your TV running? I was like, first of all, this is an old ass joke. Second of all, we don't have one. Click. Got my face. Damn. I don't even fucking Sorry. answer phones in my workplace. I just let it ring. <laughs> There's no reason to be calling me. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Look, I have no idea how to help you. <laughs> you want bread? I, I got bread. bread. Anything else is out of my jurisdiction. <laughs> you got a question about yeast? I got you. <laughs> Anything else? I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's go over and jump right into the creepy pasta. Uh, Leslie, not Leslie. <clears throat> uh, Gato will be playing the part of Dan, who's the dad character. Uh, Thoughty will be playing our childs, and I and I will be the mom and the narrator on this funny story called. Oh, it's not a funny; it's a creepy pasta. <laughs> I just like calling everything funny on this it's lovely, a lovely it's a creepy fun pasta. Silly romp. A little silly story, <laughs> silly fun time story for the fun stuff times. Anyways, we're about to read Elf on the Shelf with a knife. I hope y'all enjoy. Okay, Gato, you can start. It's creepy. Dan balked. It's cute, Julia countered. Besides, it's fun. I mean, gee, Scrooge, where's your Christmas spirit? Dan picked up the the doll and turned it over on its hands. It was the prototypical Christmas elf as imagined by the Hollywood in a red onesie, Santa hat, and painted on perm grin. Perm grin? (laughs) Painted on perm grin. Perm? I just don't understand the point. 
he continued. It's a Christmas elf, a scout for Santa, actually. We leave him somewhere and then move him during the night as though he moved himself for Annie to find in the morning. The story goes that he reports back to Santa every night whether the kid was good or bad and then returns in the morning. But he's a prankster too. You should see some of the insane things that people are doing with this thing online. Posting in at all matters of crazy situations. Julia pulled out her cell phone to show Dan some of the Pinterest images that she had seen. So... Dan was still dubious. You think it's a good idea to introduce another mythical creature to our daughter's reality? Santa, the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny aren't good enough? We need to add something else that she'll find is find out is a lie as she gets older? <laughs> <laughs> another <laughs> scam! <Christ. Dan. laughs> Just lie. <laughs> Just give us lies. <laughs> Buy him a beer. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me dad when did you get so damn cynical julia walked to the other side of the kitchen island and kissed her husband on the cheek so you think we should just completely rob our child of their sense of magic quelling her imagination in the process her husband kissed her back and began looking at the pictures of all the absurd poses parents had put the doll in it did look kind of fun at least you're not going to be dramatic about it he teased while scrolling through the screen. So what's its name? He doesn't have one yet. Annie's supposed to name him when we give it to her. There's a book that goes with it. It explains the whole deal, if you can deal with the rhyming. Dan chuckled. <laughs> Chuckle. Besides, I'm not asking you to do anything other than play along. I'll take care of the elf stuff. Julia did the air quotes as well. Just don't be a dick. <laughs> this can be your Christmas presents to me. Your dick. <laughs> not being a dick? Exactly. Just then they hear the squealing brakes of Annie's school bus out front, and after a moment the front door slamming shut. They both snickered. Skirt. <laughs> it didn't matter how many times they asked her not to slam the front door. She always did. It was as predictable as the sun and moon. Don't slam the door, they the door. both hollered. <laughs> okay, you want to do that again? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, ready. Right, one, one, two, two wait, three. Don't slam, don't the, slam door. the door. Don't slam the door. Stop laughing. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> no, you guys. <laughs> My battery is low. Hold on. Plug your phone in, baby. Hold on, hold on. Why? Well, give me two seconds, mommy and daddy. <laughs> okay. I mean, tell us so when like you're butters. in. <laughs> I need no headphones. Give me two seconds. <laughs> They both hollered out in unison, smiles on their faces. Mama and Daddy! Their beautiful six-year-old daughter came bustling into the kitchen, unceremoniously depositing her Adventure Time backpack on the floor in the process. It was the first year they had let her ride the school bus, even though she'd be begging to do it for the last three, and every time she got off, she was in the best moods. Her parents knew the novelty would wear off eventually, but not any time soon, as the act of transportation with her friends from class instead of her mom and dad, which was all she had ever known, was still new and exciting. Elf! Elf! Elf on the shelf! She screamed when she saw the doll in her mother's hands. Both her friends as well as her cousin had an elf on the shelf last year, and, she'd be as and she's been asking for one of her own for nearly ten months since Julia landed her doll and... and <clears throat> She'd been asking for her, for her own for nearly 10 months since. Julia handed her the doll and Andy gave it a big hug, all while muttering, Elf on the shelf. Elf on the shelf. Elf on the shelf. Over and over Elf again to herself, Julia looked at her husband with a, with a smug smile. You still think it's a bad idea? Dad could only <laughs> Dan could only shake his head and smile. Whatever, dear, but this is your deal, not mine. He put the phone down and took a sip of his coffee. Julia turned her attention back to Annie. 
You have to give him a name now, baby. Do you know what you want to name him? And he pulled the elf back from the hug and inspected him reflectively. Hmm. She thought out loud. Maybe Chester. Yeah, yeah. No, Chesty. He can be Chesty. Dan chuckled <laughs> again and offered. How about Chet? And he mulled it over, treating it as the important decision it was. <laughs> chet, chet, wanna bet? Hmm. Chet, chet, chatty, chet. She was testing it out on her tongue. <laughs> chatty, chatty, chet, chet. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, daddy, that sounds good. She held the doll. She <clears throat> she held the doll above her head and announced, "Everybody, ladies and gentlemen." I want to let everybody meet Chet Chet. Oh no, this is hard to read. <laughs> everybody, ladies and gentlemen. I want to let everybody meet Chet. Chet will be my new little brother. Right, mommy? Julia wasn't sure where that was coming from. No, sweetie. Don't you remember? Chet works for Santa Claus. He's going to tell, Son He's going no, to tell Santa brother. with... He's going to tell Santa whether you've been good or not. Every night after you go to sleep, Chet goes to the North Pole to tell Santa everything you did all day. You can tell him things you want, like what you want for Christmas, but once we put him somewhere, we're not supposed to touch him. And he didn't seem certain the words not supposed to touch him were coming across as gibberish for some reason. <laughs> Why don't we go and read the book again? Would you like that? Annie nodded. Her uncertain looks, okay. her uncertain look giving away to her smile that melted hearts. Okay, baby, go change out of those, cl those clothes and I'll fix you a little snack. You can eat it in the living room while I read, to read the book to you again. The child shrieked with joy. The crash panic. <laughs> top of the story she would get to participate in the rare exotic act of eating in the living room she couldn't remember the last time she had gotten to do that and he flew down the hall to her bedroom <clears throat> chet still in hand and they laughed again their baby would never cease to be a fantastic form of entertainment the rest of the evening went Hell without yeah. surprises and andy was in bed and asleep by nine o'clock her bedtime was 8.30 for the longest time, but as she got a little bit older, they found that even if she had been in the bed for a long time, Annie would actually fall, actually fall asleep till around 9. They let her stay up for the, If they let her stay up for the half hour, she would still fall asleep at, the, at, at that time, so the extra 30 minutes became a family time with board games, Legos, and stories. Green Eggs and Ham, read by Dad, brought the evening to a close. Julia, who had spent most of her day researching Elf on a Shelf tactics, was actually quite excited to play the game. She already knew what she was going to do. Chet's first night in the house. Um, she already knew what she was going to do on this. Chet's first day in the house. The idea came from one of her fir her first Pinterest pictures. She <laughs> the idea came from one of the first print print help. <laughs> <laughs> Pinterest pictures she saw. P P D P N D P <laughs> The idea came from one of the first Pinterest pictures she saw. They had placed their elf next to a knocked over bag of flour. Little elf footprints tracked throughout the spill. <laughs> it was the perfect combination of cute and mischievous. Maybe it wasn't Julia's idea, but this was the first night. There was plenty of time to come up with some original ideas on her own later. After a short hunt, she set up the bag and spill on the kitchen table and went to grab Chet from the fireplace mantle where Annie had requested he make his first shelf. It was actually a lot of fun spreading his little feet around in the flower, bringing back memories of the days when she played with dolls herself. In addition to the ones on the flower, she left little prints of flower all over the table and then placed Chet right in the middle. True, it was going to pay be in a pain in the ass to clean the table tomorrow, but the picture she was able to put on Facebook made it all worthwhile. <clears throat> Man, who fucking uses Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> 
Fucking boomers. When Julia settled into bed with Dan, she had a huge smile on her face. She loved this kind of stuff. It was like playing Santa, except, except instead of doing it one night a year, she got to do it for a whole month leading up to December 24th. Dan turned off the... Dan turned off the lamp, and she couldn't wait until the morning to see Annie's reaction. Tomorrow was Saturday, so Annie would probably be the first to get up. Every other day, Annie would be the first to rise, but on Saturday, she and Dan would sleep in while Annie would entertain herself with her toys and coloring books. Julia let sleep carry her away, while visions of elf poses danced in her head. Annie came storming into the room, and Julia's first thought was that it was way too early for her to be waking them, waking them up. The young girl threw herself onto her mother's side of the bed so they were facing were so they were face to face on the pillow. Is that right? Julia was more asleep than awake. Sing baby, Julia agreed, her eyes still closed. You can't get bad at Chet, Bobby. Julia smiled at the child's face even though she was only seeing it in her mind. Why would I get mad, baby? Her daughter went quiet for a moment, obviously mulling over the way to present Chet's bad behavior. Well, you see, um, Chet kind of got into your baking stuff. Oh yeah? Julia mused. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bobby. I can't help clean the mess. Oh, that's okay, baby. She was such a sweet child. <laughs> Mommy will clean up after Chet. Okay, Bobby, thank you. <laughs> Chet walked through the sugar and stuff <laughs> and attracted it everywhere. Yeah, Julia prompted. Yeah, he tracked all over the table and the hallway and the way to my room. He's in my rocking chair now. Julia's eyes shot open in surprise and she had to fight the inst instinct to slap a still sleeping Dan in the head. He said that he didn't want to do anything with the elf. Part of her was pleased that her husband had decided to play along, but another had a little was a little irritated that he didn't include her in his plans. When the hell did he do it anyway? Dan was not the type of man to wake up during the night. She couldn't even remember the last time he had a go he had gotten up to go pee. Oh. Well, Julia said as she sat up, I guess I'm awake now. You want some breakfast, sweetie? Annie nodded in agreement, yeah. and the two went to the kitchen, leaving Dan to sleep. Julia was, Julia was actually impressed with his work for once. She got a chance to, to inspect it. The footprints he'd made leading down the hall and into Annie's room were a lot more authentic looking than the ones that she had prepared. It was actually remarkable how evenly spaced they were. Real footprints. This must have taken him forever. Later that afternoon, Annie was playing in the backyard with the neighbor's daughter while Dan and Julia enjoyed coffee and their computer tablets on the back porch. You're not supposed to leave Chet in her bedroom, you know. He's supposed to be placed around the house so that she has to get up in the morning and hunt around for him. Huh? Dan said, looking up from his screen her comments not registering in the least. The elf on the shelf, you're not supposed to put it in the kids' room. It's like part hide and seek. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Sometimes inane comments came with the territory of marriage, and Dad just shrugged it off and went back to his news article. Julia wasn't prepared to let it go just yet. So you won't put him there anymore. This brought Dan's full attention, and he was confused. Why on earth would I put him in Annie's room? I already told you before that this is your gig, and I don't want to mess with it. It was du it was Julia's turn for confusion. Okay, then why did you? Why did I what? Sweetie, I got no clue what you're talking about. Julia was starting to get irrita irritated. She didn't like it when Dan treated her like an idiot, which wasn't often. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank God. Jesus. <laughs> Dan, the games are for Annie, not me, and frankly, I don't appreciate it. She grabbed her coffee and stormed back into the house, leaving Dan more than a little bit baffled. It seemed really early for her to be like this. <laughs> the topic didn't come up again. By dinner, Julia had forgotten it, or at the very least, put it in her mind somewhere else for the next day. The secret to a successful matrimony, after all, was all about holding up the good things closely and letting go of the not-so-good things. Give and take, compromise, and not holding grudges. These were the tenets of a happy, long-standing marriage. Probably not. First of all, that's false. I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the tenets for a happy marriage is don't give me a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Annie was asleep. 
a little after night, even though her Saturday bedtime was a little later, her internal clock unable to make the distinction between days. Julia grabbed Chet shortly after and set about positioning him in a new location. Once again, getting some help from the internet, the elf ended up on her kitchen counter next to an open package of Oreos, sweetened crumbs of cookie and cream feeling sprinkled about him. A little smear of chocolate beneath Chet's smiling mouth was the final touch, that is, if you didn't include the Facebook update. Pleased with the scene, Julia retired to bed with a Stephen King book where Dan was already asleep. The man might have a lot of issues, but falling asleep quickly and solidly was not one of them. The better to poison them with. He nutted before bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He was a rock. A few chapters of horror later, Julia joined him. The morning seemed to come quicker than normal, a sign of quality REM sleep. Julia rose and jumped in the shower before Dan could gather his senses. Sundays were nearly as hectic as the weekends, trying to get the family ready for church services on time. By the time she got out, Dan was greeting her towel-clad figure with a fresh coffee and a kiss of genuine intensity. Wow. Morning, sweetheart. He smiled, definitely a morning person. Saw a little mess you left in the kitchen last night. Get a bit of a middle-of-the-night sweet tooth? It took a moment to register before she remembered the Oreos. Oh, yeah, Chet, pretty good, wasn't it? Dan wrinkled his brow. Um, what? <clears throat> before she could finish the thought, Annie came running into the bedroom. Baba and Daddy! Chet is in my room again! She giggled. <laughs> He likes to watch over me while I sleep. <laughs> okay, baby. Dan said as he scooped up his daughter in her pink pajamas. How about we get some to eat before we get dressed for church? Are you hungry? <laughs> and he nodded gleefully. Okay, then. Let's let mommy get dressed. And they were out of the room. Julia was dumbstruck. There were so many thoughts and emotions swirling around that she could barely take inventory of them all. Had Dan moved the elf again? Was he trying to play some kind of game with her? That wasn't like him at all. Dan was the practical man who never went in for jokes or pranks. <laughs> it wasn't his MO. Is this what man gaslighting me? Going on? <laughs> Am I being <laughs> gaslighted? That's what it sounds like. Oh god, yeah. Can't fuck up marriages. Is. After quick... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. After quickly dressing in one of the three outfits designated for church, she hurried down the hall to Annie's room. Just like the little girl said, there was a Chet sitting in the very top of the choice shelves. Immediately, Julia knew it had to be Dan's doing because there was no one else in the house who would even reach the shelf where the elf was at. It made no sense. Why on earth, why on earth would he be put up there? She was fairly certain that he understood the premise and, even if he didn't, her little outburst the day before should have been enough to keep him from meddling again. <clears throat> Seeing the Oreo mess in the kitchen only confounded her further. If he was going to move it, why wouldn't he clean up the cookies? She stared intently at her husband as he doted on An Annie to see if he would give himself away. A sly smile, a knowing wink, or anything. He didn't. He she walked out of the kitchen and took several deep breaths. She desperately wanted to pull Dan aside and let him have it, but she knew she couldn't. It was a stupid thing to start a fight over for. But the biggest reason to hold her tongue was an agreement they had made the, the, the day Annie was born, that they would never again speak negatively to each other in her presence. They'd both come from broken and troubled homes, Dan's a little more violent than her own, and they each swore, long before they met, that their children would not go through the same. So she kept her mouth shut, and she went on with her day. Business as usual, even though it continued be even though it continued to be a thorn in the back of her mind. The day might have been perfect otherwise. After church, they had lunch with the Watsons and their son who was the same age of as Annie. When the elf on the shelf came up in conversation, naturally, thanks to Annie, Julie was quick to change the topic. She was definitely not prepared to go through the ordeal with her friends. After lunch, the two families met to, went to the Cineplex to see the newest Star Wars movie and then went to the mall for Christmas shopping, at least for the women. The men somehow ended up at the only establishment in the mall that served beer. A doubtful coincidence. Eight full shopping bags and a nice little buzz later, they returned home for the evening. 
Both Annie and Dan were asleep by 8.30, one from fatigue, one from beer, and Julia set forth to put her plan in action. It was fortunate that Annie could sleep through just about anything because Julia had made more than a little racket bringing the step stool to retrieve Chet, and then the additional 20 minutes she spent digging through Annie's closet for her secret weapon. She turned to the living room with the doll in a teddy bear Lanny cam that she had long since quit using. She took no time preparing a ridiculous scenario this evening. Why bother if Dan wasn't going to mess it up anyway? The elf on the shelf went to the the elf on the shelf went on the fireplace mantle, nothing special, and the nanny cam, fresh batteries intact, went on the bookshelf directly across the room. This time she was prepared and when he denied messing with her, she would have proof. With a smug smile, she surveyed her work, wishing there was someone there to pat her on the back. After changing into her PJs, she tried to let Stephen King put her to sleep, but found herself rereading the same paragraphs over and over, unable to get her mind off busting Dan. She was way too excited about catching her husband in a lie, albeit an insignificant one. Finally, she gave up on the killer clown and turned off her light. She Sleep did not come easy. Monday mornings were always a hectic tag team of getting both themselves ready for work as well as Annie for school. It was a fine-tuned routine, and one which didn't include going out to the living room for any reason. Dan was always out by the door by 6.30, while Julia would leave shortly after seeing Annie onto the school bus a little after 7. On the first step of the bus, Annie stopped and turned to her mother waiting in the driveway. Mommy, I forgot to look for Chet. It's okay, baby, she urged her forward, afraid for a split second that the child would try to get back off instead. You can look for him when we get home. I'm not going to touch him, okay? Annie nodded in agreement while giving her mother's a snow-melting smile before disappearing into the vehicle. Miss Weathers, the bus driver, couldn't help but to smile as well at the adorable exchange. Julia returned the expression as the bus pulled away. Usually, she would have just jumped into her car and left, but... Now that Annie had put the thought into her head, she had to run back inside to see. Chet was much as she expected, not in the mantle anymore. How the hell was Dan doing this? She may have been a heavy sleeper, but she was... Uh, he may have been a heavy sleeper, but she was not. The slightest noise or movement was able to wake her. She turned the nanny cam, only to see an empty spot where the teddy bear was the night before. What the hell, she muttered to herself. Chet was nowhere to be seen. Probably back in Annie's room again. Julia started down the hall to her daughter's room where something on the floor next to the hall closet caught her eye. It looked like a little chunk of hair. Upon further inspection, it was fur, brown, artificial fur. She turned it over in her fingers, wondering where it came from when she thought she saw a bit more sticking out from beneath the closet door itself. Slightly apprehensive, she opened the closet and threw on the light. What she saw froze her in place while her mind struggled to comprehend. It was the teddy bear, or rather what was left of the stuffed animal. It had been ripped to shreds, its stuffing strewn about. The camera, which was previously lodged into the bear's head, lay on the ground next to the fabric carcass, smashed into several tiny pieces. Next to that was Dan's hammer, which normally hung on a hook in the garage. The whole scene seemed so out of place and unnecessary. This was not the sort of thing Dan would do, not in a million years. This was something on an entirely different level. This was sick. Slowly, she closed the door, trying to erase the image of her mind, and uncertain how to proceed. Chet wasn't in the closet, so Julia returned, going down the hall to Annie's room. He was there. Chet was sitting on Annie's bedside table, arm draped over her alarm clock. Didn't she say she forgot to look for the elf? Annie was the quintessential, precious child full of curiosity and question, and she had an amazing eye for details, constantly pointing out things Julia overlooked. It was, totally, it was totally unlike her to have not seen Chet. Of course it was possible. It was morning after all, and she would have been motivated by the routine and the excitement. <clears throat> She would have been motivated by the routine and the excitement of the school bus ride. It was just so unlikely. Julia picked up the doll and looked at it with disdain. For the first time since she saw she was Annie's age, she wondered if it was truly possible that an inanimate object like this toy could be alive. You're losing it, girl. Maybe. Maybe she was going insane, but what were the alternatives? Dan, the love of her life, and the father of her child was playing some kind of psychotic mind games with her? 
Annie was somehow getting up in the middle of the night herself and placing the elf in places he could never reach on her own? No, it was actually easier to accept that a possessed toy had been brought into their home. Annie's clock said 7.20. She was already she was already late. Shit, I don't have time for this, <laughs> she told no one in particular. Unsure what to do with Chet, she ended, ta- she ended up taking the elf to the study and locking it in the top drawer of the desk where she and Dan shared but really only used to do, to do their taxes. She put the key in her purse, gave the desk one gave the desk one more sideways glance and then was out the door. An hour later, she was taking dictation and the entire situation was out of her mind. A day probably would have passed as average had she not received a call from Annie's school just after lunch. She wasn't feeling well. The school nurse said that she had a slight fever and nausea, that a strain of flu had been going around the kids lately. It was a little after two when they pulled in the driveway. After having been on both the pediatrician and the pharmacy, Annie was in a fetal ball in the back seat, halfway to unconsciousness. It broke Julia's heart to see her like that, so small and fragile looking, her heart warming, ever-present smile absent. Parenthood could provide some of the best, the most amazing moments a a person can experience in this world, but it could also scare the living shit out of you. Just seeing your child sick could be terrifying, And and Annie only had the flu. Julia couldn't phantom the pain if it was worse than that. It was part of the reason she had given she had given to St. Jude's every year since Annie was born. It didn't take long to get Annie to into her pajamas under the covers. In the weakest voice imaginable, she asked for the story, but was asleep before Julia got past the first page of Where the Wild Things Are. Kissing her head gently and closing the door behind her, Julia went to the kitchen to start a pot of coffee. It wasn't even three o'clock yet. She was exhausted. If she was going to make it through dinner, she would need a little caffeinated help. She didn't make it to the pot coffee pot, however, as the mess in the kitchen floor impeded her progress. The silverware drawer has been, had been pulled out, its contents spilled on the floor in an unusual, if not deliberate, fashion. The forks, spoons, and butter knives were all set to an end, angled in a haphazard fashion, to create several uneven box designs of varying sizes. It was odd for sure, but what really stood out, as well as being the most disturbing aspect, was the steak knives. They had a collection of ten very classy, very sharp steak knives which were now embedded in the floor like gravestones. Surprisingly, her first reaction was relief. There's no way Dan could have done this. That only, at la- that only lasted for a second before the appropriate degrees of panic set in. She pulled one of the knives from the floor and began to scan the room, fighting to keep through at bay. Was someone in the house? They have an expensive alarm system, so it would be unlikely it was still on and in working order, as far as she could tell. But no one broke in. Who could have done this? Her eyes flicked towards the study. Chet. That's not possible. It shouldn't be possible, at least. Slowly, avoiding the creaks on the floor, Julia made her way to the study. She could see the desk the moment she turned the corner, and her heart froze in her chest. The locked drawer was sitting wide open. As crazy as she, as she might have looked, as crazy as she might have looked doing it, Julia treated the room as if it were a ten-inch doll. Might come. <clears throat> As crazy as she might have looked doing it, Julia treated the room as if a ten-inch doll might come running at her from any angle. She looked under the sofa, the chair, the tables. She looked behind and through the bookshelves before she came to the desk. The wood around the drawer was chipped and broken, a lot of force obviously used to break it open. The elf, much as she feared, was somehow expected, was nowhere to be seen, and her head began to swim. This couldn't be real. At some point in the last 20 minutes, she stepped into the Twilight Zone or an alternate dimension, more at home in one of those Stephen King stories she loved. Maybe that was it. Maybe all the horror she'd been reading for the last 20 years finally pushed her into a psychotic breakdown. The sound of glass breaking in the kitchen broke her spell and Julia spun on her heels at the noise. Checking on it wasn't her first instinct. Checking on it wasn't her first instinct, however. It was her daughter lying sick at the other end of the ha- <clears throat> lying sick at the other end of the house, and whatever made that noise was between them. The study had doors to both the kitchen and the hall, and Julia, 
As much stealth as she could muster, edged her way to the hallway. The view of the kitchen wasn't extensive as she did as she slid past, and other than silverware art, nothing looked out of place. Inches from being at the threshold of being able to see around and out in the hallway, she was frozen yet again by another noise. This one significantly more disturbing than the shattered glass. It was the pitter patter of little feet scurrying <laughs> down the hall. Really little feet. It was a distinctive sound, bigger than a rodent, and with a different cadence. And with a different cadence as well. Julia knew the moment she heard it. It was that damn elf on the shelf. It was Chet. Julia peered around the corner, just in time to see Annie's bedroom door slam shut at the far end. That little son of a bitch. Maternal instincts kicked into her action. Kicked into her. <clears throat> Maternal instincts kicked her into action and she flew into the hall, her shocked feet her socked feet sliding on the wood floor, pushing her into the dining room. Bracing herself against the dining room table, she tore off her socks and sprinted to Annie's door. It was locked. No, no, please, God, no. Julie gave the fire axe in the garage a moment's consideration before casting the thought aside. If it was all possible, she wanted to get Annie out of this situation without scarring her as she was the perfect age of being scarred for life at seeing her mother tear through the bedroom door of the axe like a scene from The Shining. She flipped on the hall light and examined the, do and examined the doorknob. It was a simple interior knob with a lock on one side and a small hole in the other. It had been a long time, but she remembered the trick and sprinted back in the kitchen drawer for a paper clip. The entire process of finding the clip and opening the door look, door lock took less than a minute, made all the more difficult by the tears that were pooling in her eyes. So help me God if you hurt my baby. She opened the door quietly, but quickly. Annie was fine, still curled in a little ball under the blankets in a fevered sleep. Chet was there too, laying on the pillow next to the back of Annie's head. There was no movement from the toy, but a couple of steps in the room revealed the kitchen knife resting next to its hands between it and her baby. Julia took slow, deliberate, minefield steps, fully expecting Chet, with his lifeless eyes and painted-on grin, to spring to life at any moment and jab the sharp end of the blade into her child's innocent skull while she slept on her wear. The last time she put the knives away, she accidentally sliced her finger. She knew how sharp they were. Laser cut. The salesperson guaranteed they would never grow dull. She was only six steps away from being able to scoop up her daughter and flee this madness. Five steps. Annie's medicine was a sedative effect and her breathing was deeper than usual. Four steps. A dog barked somewhere on the right outside of <clears throat> A dog barked somewhere outside and Julia Finch with some primitive sense that the noise would set the nightmare in motion. Chet just stared at her. Three steps. So close. Would she be able to get Annie off the bed before Chet could hurt her? The logistics, the logistics began to trouble her. Annie was under the blankets. They could be an obstacle. It might be better to go for Chet instead. Throw herself on the elf and the knife before he could put it to use. How strong could he really be anyway? Two steps. Was that movement? Were her eyes just playing tricks on her, or did the toy just twitch? Julia was expecting the creature to come to life with such intensity. It was quite possible her mind was playing tricks on her. One step. Julia was at the foot of the bed now, a decision that needed to be made quickly. Annie or Chet? Damn it, woman, decide! Several precious seconds ticked away before she made up her mind, but she finally did. It was going to be check. Fuck that elf. <laughs> <laughs> her muscles tense to, her muscle tends to spring as she planned to launch herself full bear on the demon toy. The next few seconds happened so quickly it would be hard to properly pierce them together again. Later when she would try to remember, Chet did move, as if sensing her resolve. The elf's head twisted to the side to make eye contact with Julia. It had actual eyes. The motion made that much the motion made that much worse with the knowledge that the toy wasn't designed with bendable joints. Mm -hmm. Unlike Barbie or G.I. Joe, Chet's neck shouldn't have been able to do that. Their gaze lasted only a split second when the front door of the house came flying open. It was Dan's signature move, which he stole from Cosmo Kramer, 
the first time he saw it and continued to utilize long into syndication, people under 20 had no idea why he did it. Gato, that's you. I'm right here. <gasps> okay. <gasps> okay. <laughs> it's your turn, bro. Oh, shit. Really? Okay, see I it? see you now. Okay. <clears throat> Lucy. Dan was doing his best Ricky Ricardo, obviously in a good mood. I'm home. <laughs> the commotion. The commotion was enough to make Julia look over her shoulder instinctively, and then she turned back to the bed. Chet was gone. In a state of unbridled terror, Julia screamed at the top of her lungs, waking Annie and sending Dan running. You think I'm crazy? Julia was pulling the sheet up to her head to hide the tears that were coming from her umpteenth. <clears throat> Julia was pulling the sheet up to her head to hide the tears that were coming for the umpteenth time that evening. Dan was climbing into bed with her. I didn't see that, sweetheart. You said I need to go see Dr. Simpson. <laughs> I said we should consider it. I don't think you're being fair to yourself if we don't consider the possibility that maybe something happened in your mind i mean baby you realize that you're asking me to believe right not wanting to look her husband in the eyes she turned to her side putting her back to dan i didn't imagine it it happened and you don't believe me baby his voice was as soothing as he could muster i believe that you believe it Julia spun around again to look at him. What about the silverware? What about the knife and the damn bear? You think I did all those things and what, forgot about it? Blocked it out? I mean, really, Dan, what are you saying? I, for no damn reason whatsoever, had a psychotic breakdown over the last three days, cultivating with my placing a knife in our daughter's pillar. In our daughter's pillow. Is that what you're saying, Dan? He sighed and put his hand on her shoulder. She was quick to push it away. I searched every inch okay. of this house, inside and out, Julia. There is literally, and I mean literally, no spot that I didn't look. Where is this Chet now? It's not in the garage. It's not in the drawers. I'm telling you, I checked everywhere. You saw me. That just verifies what I'm saying. The little piece of shit ran away. He's hiding, waiting around here somewhere. I know it. Would you listen to yourself? You sound... He trailed off. Crazy? Julia finished. What about the bear, Dan? You think I could have ripped it up like that? With scissors. And the camera? The hammer. Julia shot upright in bed, eyes wide open and wild. The camera, she screamed again. The camera, the camera, the camera. She swung her feet into the slippers and scampered out into the room, leaving a, befu leaving a befuddled Dan behind. When a couple of minutes passed without her return, he put his own slippers on and sought her out, finding her at the kitchen table with, with a laptop computer. You want to clue me in? He asked as he pulled up a chair next to her. The nanny cam came with a website subscription, which I think automatically renews. I didn't think to ever renew or cancel it. She was in the process of recovering the password from the website. Okay, yeah. Dan Press. And the website keeps a copy of the video. What video? All of it. She smiled for the first time all night. As long as it's recording, a copy of it is streamed to the cloud. Our hard copy re-records re every 24 hours, but it's still saved online. Aha! She apparently found what she was looking for, and in a minute or so later, they were watching full screen a copy of the fireplace mantle and the elf on the shelf upon it. They watched their lifeless living room for a few minutes before Dan was asking her to fast forward. Okay. Okay. She agreed, and they were watching it at eight times the normal speed. Another minute, and then Chet was gone. Whoa. Dan exclaimed. Julia found the spot and they watched the video that validated Julia's claims. As unthinkable as it was, the elf on a shelf stood with frighteningly lifelike movements that leapt on and leapt to the floor. A full minute passes when the nanny can begins to move, being dragged into the hall closet with the occasional red one-seed limb passing through the shot. The video goes black as the door to the closet is closed behind it, but they could still ho but they could still hear ripping and finally smashing. Julia and Dan looked at each other. 
and wide Julie and Dan looked at each other in wide-eyed horror, no semblance of disbelief remaining, and then, slowly, around the room, Julia was ho was hoping Dad would spring into action, that he would know what to do, but he looked as terrified and transfixed as she had been at first. A noise from the other end of the house broke their spell as well as the silence. It was the slamming door, Annie's door, and it was followed by the screams of their child the end so that was elf on the shelf with a knife what did you guys think oh wait <laughs> i didn't realize you were done with that it's over <laughs> oh no so uh sleepy pasta is real because oh. gato fell asleep for a bit <laughs> poor baby <laughs> we could hear your breathing <laughs> that was really funny <laughs> yeah oh, i like how it captures <laughs> like the realistic american marriage married couple you know mm -hmm. I don't... that they just hate each other <laughs> yeah <laughs> the wife's on pinterest and the dad's an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> the true american way yeah um, i decided to cut out the part where like we're like the, we're like uh the husband is just like oh you must just be on your period or whatever i'm just like i want to cut that out it's completely unnecessary yeah man it's too real. I don't like it. I'm triggered. <laughs> triggered. I'm uh, triggered. Don't fucking talk to me that I way. I like that at the end it wasn't just like the wife going crazy. I was. I thought that was the route it was gonna take, where it's like the wife was trying to kill the kid all along. I like that there was an actual haunted doll. Those are my favorite. Yeah. None of that psychological thriller. I want actual like monsters, please. Like, just give me. Just give me something <laughs> stupid. I'm not smart. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to have to think about it. I want to... <laughs> the elf is the shelf, okay? That's what I want. I want the elf on the shelf. <laughs> Please. Please. I want him to get up. Maybe it would have just been... With his hyper-realistic eyes. <laughs> and look at me. He did have hyper-realistic eyes. <laughs> ah, they just didn't it. It call it that. It was real creepy pasta then. <laughs> His uh, his real life his lifelike eyes is what they called it I think or something along those lines. <sighs> Bad, zero out of ten. They didn't use hyper realistic in their once. <laughs> they used like hyper like lifelike movement. <laughs> I get. Oh, okay. There you go. I think uh, creepy pasta <laughs> writers are trying to stray away from the word hyper realistic now. <laughs> It's just the it's just the meme now. <laughs> Maybe it's like the fan fiction people trying to stay away from murmured and chuckled. Yeah, man, we should we should give the logo hyper realistic eyes for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You want to read a Chucky fan fiction now? <sighs> Someday, Maybe we could do that soon. That could be like a bonus episode. Subscribe to the Patreon. On the Patreon. Yeah. One of the NSFW ones. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> we don't have a Patreon, by the way. We just like making the okay, joke. Okay, but if you want it. <laughs> you want it. <laughs> we... <laughs> I'll sing the My Buddy song. I don't care. <laughs> I'll do anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> just give Thoughty money. <laughs> yeah, that's all I want. <laughs> All right. I'll promote anything. <laughs> Give us your MLM code. We'll say it. Oh, yeah, please. Oh, my God. Dude. Whoever. I think. Did I tell you last time that there was someone putting MLMs on the board at my work? Yeah, they came back. <gasps> they came back. I was like, oh, my God. I don't know. We're not supposed to put anything on there that's not like a. What's the word? Nonprofit. Yeah, like anything that's not non-profit and like she just keeps putting her stuff up there. Tell her to stop. I'm like, bitch, stop. Yeah. I hope she was in there because I like tore it down and was like, if this bitch one more time puts her stupid shit up on the board. Put her sticker. I hope she heard me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least I think. This is what I think about your fucking business, bitch. I think that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> that gentle bitch. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I mean, that's the end of the podcast. Uh, Heidi Ho. <laughs> you stupid ass. <laughs>
<laughs> Heidi ho. No, no more bitches. Only Heidi hoes now. What? <laughs> that's, that's the thing. It's the thing Chucky says. He says, Heidi ho. My name's Chucky. Want to play? That's that's, a, that's his thing. That's what he says. He says, <laughs> no, not like that. Not like the Christmas. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you were talking about. It goes, Heidi Ho. I thought you were talking about. My name's Chucky. I thought you were talking about. Does Chucky do have a haunted doll what? episode? <laughs> Anyways, I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Anyways, I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We are haunts underscore r underscore us. Uh, find us on Tumblr haunts dash r dash us. And uh, if you have any questions or just want to contact us, leave us an email at hauntsrus at gmail.com. And don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Thank you for joining us tonight. Also, tell us if you want us to make a Patreon. (laughs) They don't. (laughs) No, they do. They do? (laughs) They do, though. Yeah, tell us what you think. They want pictures of our doll's feet. <laughs> tell us what you think about this, our very first creepy pasta episode for the holiday season. We might do some more later because uh, the internet is strife with haunted doll content. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to do all those things I just said and have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>